And now, coming to you live from the tri-state area and San Francisco, California, it's the best part of Wednesday, Waffle Box, with your hosts, Mike Fish and Kush Hayes. Welcome to Waffle Box, the podcast where we talk about anything, everything, and nothing, all at the same time. Come out on episode 62, we're talking about the Mile High Fight Club. We're talking about some interesting uh, real-life wire situation heading out. That's uh, Natalie Portman. And then we've got I just, another Idris Elba movie coming up in the movie review. And much, much more. I'm Mike Fish, and I am joined, as always, by the main man in San Fran. It's Mr. Kush Hayes. Kush, how you doing, buddy? What's good, y'all? Mike Fish, how are you doing, dude? I am wonderful. It's August 31st, which signals the mm. first day of another year of my life, I'm officially 37 years old. Good oh Lord. my goodness! Happy birthday! I think it was yesterday, but okay. that's all you—that's all you're gonna oh. get out of me. I'm not gonna give you my last four digits, my social security number, and my mother's maiden name, my birth dates. That's all you get. But yeah, okay, fair enough. Good stuff. Good stuff. You know, what do you do at that do point? Do you feel any older? Do you feel any wiser? What? You said you're 37 now. 37. Well, I'm st- look, I'm, I've got the glasses. On. So these aren't, so for those watching, I'm wearing glasses for the first time. These aren't actual prescription. These are the, uh, what are they, the blue, blue light blocking okay. glasses. Blue blockers. Because if I, I've, I've started to get to that point now, if I sit at a computer for too long, I get the headaches and stuff. So yeah, it's you all downhill. Guard and everything. Oh, could you imagine? Yeah. Boys 37 was a weird year, so like I turned 35, and then the next year, despite the 36. fact that I obviously was 36, for some reason I can never bring myself to say, yeah, I'm 36. Like I was like, yeah, I don't know how old I am. And then for whatever reason, when I was 37, I didn't do it on purpose, but my zipper would not stay up ever. Once a day, I'd walk out with just my fly down, walking down the street, perfect daylight. I could not stop. I don't know what the hell it was. And only when I turned 38 did I did it stop. Like a full year of this went on. It's an interesting uh, trait. You can't make these things up, man. And it's one of those things where like, this is going to get me in trouble. <laughs> well, I can confirm that my zipper is up. So I'm, I'm so far, I'm doing good. Winning. I'm already winning. <laughs> You're Life already winning, buddy. Um, but other than me... Celebrating the non a non birth, no nothing important until forty. I guess I can have a big party at forty. No one gives a shit about yeah. my thirty seventh well, birthday. Um, by the time I got to thirty eight, I just started telling people I was forty. It was just easier. I don't know why. I mean, it's a good round number. Life begins at mm-hmm. forty as well, so why wouldn't you want to get there faster? Mm. Yeah, what have you been up to? What have you been up to? any exciting adventures in the land of Cushays? We worked uh, the Oakland A's, uh, New York. Uh, Yankees uh, series this past weekend, four days in a row, and um, yeah, man, like there's a lot of Yankees fans out there. So that, that was pretty incredible. They were they were louder than uh, the home team. Pretty nuts. I'm going to the series the Yankees went, uh, lost. ended a tie. Oh, ended in a tie. The only thing I know about baseball is that the Yankees were cruising, and then for some reason they couldn't win a game for love nor money in August. So I'm pretty sure they're glad this month's almost over. Yeah, no, the, the first night they squashed it to the point where like multiple, multiple people made the, where, where's the squash rule? Where, where's the mercy rule at? Like, like at one point it was 11 to nothing. It was that the game would end up 13 to five, but still it was just like, fuck. That's not a good look. Even I know mm. that. <clears throat> oh, sorry. Sorry, so I see um speaking of and actually there's no segue there we're just going to dive straight into the first story i guess um well this week so it's, it's another i just elba special we're talking about three thousand years of longing in this evenings or this mornings this afternoons whenever you're listening we don't judge uh movie review obviously a lot of people know i just elba for his work in the wire hmm. and apparently I've never seen it. What? <laughs> it's incredible. Mm, it's, My man. 
Yeah, no, never that should it. be your next project. Watch The Wire. It's fantastic. It's fantastic. I believe you. I believe all of you. Um, but yes, anyway, I just Elba was in that. Um, and apparently, the uh, the drug game in Baltimore is is a lot more real than uh, you'd imagine. So well, you NASA, don't say. Yeah, apparently, uh, there's a there's a lot of drug dealings going on in America. Apparently, you know what they should they should start a war on drugs because uh, hmm. apparently it's not good. It's not good. Drugs smacks smack his whack or whatever they say. Um, so Natalie Portman was in Baltimore shooting her Apple TV Plus show, Lady in the Lake, which okay. I've always, I've always heard commercials for Apple TV Plus, right? And mm -hmm. for some reason, they always feel the need to when they say, hey, coming streaming now on Apple TV Plus, and then they have to add on a streaming service from Apple. But you know, shit. Like, who, who... <laughs> Thanks, Apple. Um, but yes, yeah, so she was shooting Lady in the Lake. Um, and But then they had to put a stop to it because some young gentlemen would come up to the producers of the movie and they would give them a little bit of advice i guess a little bit of advice for the local area you know it's always good to get some you know, local advice so you know your surroundings basically yeah. what their advice was is that hey this is our block that you're filming in right now so you got two options either give us fifty thousand dollars or We'll start shooting people. <laughs> See you this evening. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, I believe I, I believe that is covered under IATSE, but I, I I'm not sure. So, what did the producers do? Well, you'll be shocked to find out that one, they went to the police to inform oh, them okay. of this, uh, and, and apparently the locals turned out to be shock drug dealers in the area, mm. and they. They didn't. They didn't give up the fifty thousand dollars. So what they've done, they've had to halt production of the Lady in a Lake until they find a new area to film in. Obviously, uh, one off to Canada. But, yeah, just, or just go to At Atlanta, Georgia. Mm. Every, every, every fucking film's in Georgia, right? Well, they got gangs in Georgia too. What so is this thing catching on? Great. <laughs> I'm glad I live near They're New York City wish where it's just... all safe and everyone loves each other. I'm sure they wish they uh, they're gonna end up wishing they had just paid the fifty grand for the protection. Like, yeah. Uh, but the thing, it's, it's definitely gonna affect the. It's gonna affect. It's gonna affect the project. Like that's one of the reasons why the wire is so popular. Like they filmed in Baltimore, and they fucking work with the locals there, including. The uh, the undesirables and the gang members. Oh, I'm sure they were hired as researchers or something like that. Consultants, for sure. Consultants, there security. we go. Security. Added security. security. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the wire paid the, the 50, 50 Gs. But it's going to be, is it, I don't, I don't, it doesn't say how far they're in, into production, but it's going to be pretty strange where suddenly, like, in Baltimore, and suddenly Natalie Portman's background is suddenly a lot nicer but, hmm, it's, <laughs> it's wichita or uh <laughs> yeah alberta canada and the gang members talk like this eh? so, so you should was... uh, you should pay us uh the fifty thousand uh, dollars eh? don't you know <laughs> it, it would be wise of you to pay the fifty thousand dollars okay do we have no, an understanding buddy key <laughs> Hey guy, we got an understanding. Oh yeah, you yeah. wouldn't be able to do that in Canada. It's like, yeah. Pay us the fifty k, or we'll come back and hit you with a stick. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this is the first. Uh, sorry, so this is pretty, I'm I'm shocked at this kind of thing. I'm sure maybe it has happened, but I'm shocked. This is the first time this kind of thing is breaking out in the news. Surely this kind of ha thing happens a lot way more often. Actually, yeah, the the Godfather, the, the AX, yeah. Godfather and Goodfellas and the Sopranos all all worked with the uh, with the Mab. Maybe that's what they just that's they messed up on. They should have 
just gone in saying. there straight away and just said, "Hey, who who runs this this area? Who Can runs I have a word? Do you want to come over here? Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, that's how they speak in Baltimore. Mm-hmm. Oh, violence, violence, violence." That's all we're going to be talking about. So, because that brings us on to our next. So, we've got a bunch of stories to open up this week's Waffle Box. Um, everyone's heard of uh, the Mile High Club, right? That's a thing. Mm-hmm. Even though mm-hmm. I am a bit of a stickler for this, because I don't like the fact that it's called the Mile High Club, because technically, once a, a, a commercial airline is a cruising altitude. It's probably more around like six to seven miles. Hmm. Yeah, but the, the seven mile high club doesn't... Sounds like a religious thing. Well, it's just, hey, we're having some six mile sex. That kind of rolls off. Mm-hmm. Do you fancy some a quick a- SMS in the bathroom? <laughs> a short message service? <laughs> What would I do with a short message service? Sir, your, your phone's supposed to be on airplane mode. Why are you trying to send <laughs> SMSs? Um, but yes, so many people have heard the Mile High Club, but not many people have heard about the Mile High Fight Club. Hmm. Probably because the first rule of Mile High Fight Club is you don't speak about Mile High Fight Club. So two Air France pilots have been suspended after a physical altercation in the cockpit cockpit fighting there's a joke reports say the pilot and the co-pilot exchanged blows as they flew an airbus a320 from geneva to paris in june swiss news outlets la tribune which translates mm. from french to the tribune so okay i'm just yeah. multilingual that, that, that adds up that adds up um members of the cabin crew intervened after hearing the noise one crew member stayed in the cockpit until the flight landed safely. So he just sat in the middle, like, hey, hey, I'm not leaving. You sit there. Don't <laughs> speak. You and you sit there. Don't, I don't care who started. I'm bending it. I had to sit oh, maybe we tried those playing around. <laughs> That's it. We're okay. going back to Winnipeg. Um, the incident did not affect the flight, the airline told La Tribune. The incident comes after a report published by France. His air investigation body on Tuesday said that the airline had a culture which lag- lacked rigor when it came to safety procedures. So, does this, what, what kind of safety procedure? Like, are you supposed to have a bouncer at the door? Like, does this thing happen often? Uh, first I've ever heard of it. But yeah, there's, there, you know, there should be a sky marshal on board, apparently. Yeah. Who knows? Attention, everyone. This is your pilot speaking. Uh, I want to let you know that my co-pilot this afternoon, Steve, is a a bit of a bitch. And he punches like a girl. Uh, So I'm going to have to put the seatbelt side on while I punch him in the face. Don't you say that. You shut up. You you shut your stupid face up. (laughs) And then I do this the entire time. Maybe this is why your wife left you. Oh, shit. Ah, ah, ah. Getting personal. Not the face. Not the face. It's getting personal. Oh, and they're French, which I bet they cut straight to the core. But it sounds That's wonderful hard. when it happens. <laughs> your mother... Petite un penis. Un your mother is a whore. <laughs> a la whore. <laughs> <laughs> To speak to my Pepe Le Pew and other French references. Wouldn't that be a great scene? Like that's where like one of them, as they're fighting, one of them leans on the, the tannoy, whatever. And so as you're just like enjoying your in-flight meal, it just says, fuck you, 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 so the who won? Did someone get knocked out? How did it get resolved? Well, it didn't say who won. So I reckon, yeah, it was just a couple of slappy slaps until someone was like, get in between them. I was like, no. Stop hitting me. I'm French. 
Because yeah, uh, I mean, hey, but you, you have to think it, it got pretty heated because mm-hmm. I mean, you're never going to be know what you're going to do in that situation. So you're in a situation, but I'm pretty sure if someone pissed me off, I would be like, J- as soon as I've landed this plane, I'm going to slap you. Like now is probably not a good time to fight. Because, you know, yeah, well, you know, we're flying. So, so someone, something must have been said. I'm sure someone's mother that was born into it. Because, but yeah, I'm sure it was it. Was it cruise control, autopilot bullshit? Autopilot, yeah. Autopilot. Yeah. So, you reckon uh, when after they were fighting, after they split them up, someone was like, hey, 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 you two, cool your jets. Knock it off. <laughs> Knock it off, YouTube. Cool your jets. Get it? <laughs> and then they all had a laugh about it. Oh, oh, oh. I and love the plane you. froze in midair just for a moment. <laughs> As the credits ran. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Uh, and everyone got along. Um, final story, training story this week. Uh, I honestly have no idea who this person is. I probably should have done oh. research. But um, so she's Sydney Sweeney. So she's an actress. She stars mm-hmm. in the show. H- H- I think it's an HBO Euphoria. Oh, okay. Not I know opinion. of it. That, I think I've seen. Good. I've seen the first episode. I think it sounds like something my wife would watch. But um, Sarah oh, Sydney Sweeney, sorry, was so. Here's the story. Okay, she got a lot of flack on social media uh, over the mm-hmm. weekend. So sure. she had her mother's 60th birthday party right Hmm. and they are being accused of having a quote-unquote maga themed birthday party what is that so basically so here we go so a lot of people were seen in photos when they were posted the event some of them had like so one of them actually had like a a MAGA hat, you know, make America mm-hmm. great again, but instead it said like make 60 great again or something like that. And but mm-hmm. other stuff were like wearing like blue lives matters shirts and shit mm-hmm. like that, right? And she got a lot of flack. Now, as I've made mention before, you know, we don't like to get political on this show at the end of the day. Hey, no, you vote me shaking for, my head, no. If you vote for Biden, that's great. If you vote for Trump, that's great. Hey. To each their own. It's your right to do whatever you want. So I'm not going. So I don't think personally, you know, hey, if, if her family are big fans of Donald Trump and they wanted to celebrate that at the birthday party, who the, who who are we to judge? They let them mm-hmm. stay fucking birthday party, whatever. So I don't think. But however, at the same time, in today's world, everyone's got an opinion about some everything, and everyone's getting offended about everything. So if you put pictures online. I'm not saying they're in the right, but you have to expect people are going to talk shit, right? That's just a thing. That's it's the same as like if if a young lady posts a picture on Instagram with like a tight fitted outfit and a breasticles all hanging out. Oh, yeah. I'm not well, saying they're in the right. Talk they more about this tiny top. But you you could have to expect you're going to get some creepy creeps in your mentions. It's it's just, how it's, many of her breast? How much of her breasticles are spilling out, Mike? Just, just enough to where you can see like a hint of uh, area. Talking like, under boob. We're talking. Oh, maybe a bit of under, boob. You know, where it's got that bit of classy cutout bit, so you can just see like the, the bottom quarters of the under boob. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm talking about. You know. What I'm talking about. I know what you, you know. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, <laughs> under boob's the best kind of boob. Um, but yes, here's where I had an issue. Like, come, like, again, no matter who politician you're after here. It's the mum's 60th birthday and you're here wearing a fucking baseball cap and t-shirt. Come on, it's a 60th birthday, buddy. Fix your hair, put a shirt on. God's sake, show some respect for this woman. She gave birth to you. That's all I'm saying. That's what pissed me off about the story. It's like, who, who turns up at the 60th birthday party wearing a fucking t-shirt and baseball cap? I don't care what's on it. Am I, am I, maybe I'm getting old. You know, I'm 37 now. I'm getting. But you might be getting old now. You know, next year you'll be 40. 
I remember I went to my my uh, wife's aunt's birthday party, 60th birthday actually, same as this, and and the theme okay. was quote unquote formal, All right? So you know, I oh. just, so I nice shirt, suit, tie. I looked the part, right? And then there was just some guy. I don't know who he was. I think it's a friend of the family. He fucking just turns up in jeans with holes in. Some fucking white. Do you remember like the old Affliction T-shirts back in the day when they were? Oh yeah. I don't think it was one of those, but it's that kind of style thing. And he had like the oh, yeah. belt, the loose belt box of the the thing was just like hanging down. Uh, is it to say, look, this is my fake penis? Look at me. You know, it's like what the <laughs> fuck. And he had a either? chain coming from his wallet, like mm-hmm. yeah. That so when you heard formal, that's what you fucking thought. It's my formal wallet chain, brah. Dress up, respect your elders. I, I, I paid a hundred dollars for these jeans with the holes in them. These are my these, probably these are my those, four those jeans, you, These are my I Sunday my jeans. Suit. But anyway, Sydney Sweeney, happy birthday! He's gonna hate if you if you want to have a Donald Trump themed birthday party. I'm sure there's more. Again. I was making this point, right? So I went to the Giants Jets game yesterday, right? Okay. And oh. it was a lot of fun. But someone there had, I was chatting to Alex on Monday on my Claret and Big Blue podcast. And I was chatting to, hmm. someone had like a Jets jersey and on the back they had Trump 45. And again, hmm. I'm like, hey, look, I don't care who you vote for, who you start, but it That's just weird seems flex. weird. Having your favorite president on the back, like even if someone had Obama forty four, I'd still go. That's fucking weird. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm sure there's evidence out there um, disproving this statement, but I don't think anyone ever had like a, a Bush jersey or an Obama jersey or a Clinton jersey. I bet there is no Biden jerseys out there. Um, yeah, Trump fans, they're uh, they're a passionate lot. They're like. They're like the Raiders fans of politics. They're everywhere. Like, yeah. <laughs> uh, interesting fashion choices. All right. Let's, uh, let's talk about a lighter affair, shall we? Sure. This time, let's, let's, should we talk about some world records that are happening in the world right now? Only if they're really dumb. That sounds good, like a deal. It's time for this week's Dumb World Record. Of the week. Why? Why? Why would I? Why? 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 Why would you want to do that? Uh, why? Oh, why? Indeed. So this week's dumb world record comes to us from the great state of South Carolina. Mm-hmm. Alternatively yeah, known as that state underneath North Carolina. Hey, you know that that math adds up. Wait, let me let me check my phone. Get the get the compass out. That, that it is under North Carolina. You are correct, Mike Fish. So this man, he is so actually this world record technically is he 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 does hold this world record, but this, that's not the dumb part about it. So a, a South Carolina man called Robbie Steen of Fort Mill, South Carolina. I know that area. It's a okay. lovely area actually in South Carolina. He previously set the Guinness World Record for fastest golf cart with a top speed of 118.76 miles per hour in 2014. That's a golf cart? That's awesome. That's a pretty fast golf cart. Those are a lot of fun to drive. Yeah, man. And, And this one goes over 100 miles an hour. That's amazing. But this man is not happy with that. And oh, even no. though, surprisingly, no one has attempted to or broken his world record, so he still has the world record, the fastest golf mm-hmm. cart, he's decided, ah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try again. And he is currently attempting this new record today, Wednesday, August 31st, and he claims that he can, he's designed a golf cart that can hit the speed exceeding 150 miles per hour. 
Jesus, man. The DeLorean only needed to do 88 miles an hour to go back in time. What, is, what does this guy want to do? I hope yeah. he wears a helmet. I hope they make remake Back to the Future with a golf cart. Me too. Me too, buddy. Although I don't think it's going to... Once you go through that, that portal and you come out the other side in flames, mm -hmm. there's not much protection with a golf cart. No, no, definitely no. Yeah, yeah. No protection from the radioactivity that is involved in time travel. I think I need a, a thicker suit, I think. So Robbie Steen, so he has a family business, Plum Quick Motors. Quick plug, not an ad. Sponsor this podcast. Has been building golf carts for 46 years. And he said this latest speedy cart has been six years in the making. Mm. So, uh, wow. I mean, it's, I guess if, if that's his family, he's, it, he's doing this all day, every day anyway. He's making golf carts, I guess. So it's not like he's going out. Mm -hmm. way, but if you yeah, hold the world just... record. Be happy. Why is he doing it? And this just sounds dangerous. So I'm sure, I'm assuming this is going in a straight line, right? It's a drag line. I'm assuming there's no yeah, he's not taking any corners line. with these golf carts. You don't want to, you do not want to make a turn going that fast. <laughs> So here, that this is my be... theory. This is just based on the. I bet he's got a rival in the golf cart industry, like the the Yinduiz Yang, and that dude was talking some shit one night. He's like, "I'm gonna break your record, Sam, or whatever this guy's name is." I bet like, he's got you I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make my golf. I'm gonna make it go 120 miles an hour. And he went, "Oh, really? Fuck you and your mom." This is gonna go 155 miles an hour. I've been working. I've been working on it. I've been working on it just because your ass was going to say something. I knew it. Fucking Sam. Fucking Sam. That's how that went down. Yeah, yeah there, there, I feel that you, it, there needs to be some curvature in this because yeah. I don't know where he's doing this, but I'm sure it feels great for him being in a golf cart going 150 miles per hour, but watching it, it's kind of, I want some dangerousness, something like Give me something here. You, you'd be surprised how open some of these tracks are. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure they'll have no problem. If, if there's a racetrack next to them, like a Sears Point or an etc. Like, he's in South Carolina, right? Fort should Mill, no South Carolina. Finding any spot to, should have no problem finding a venue to host this event. And it's going to be like fake bleachers. It's going to be a big crowd. You could probably He's be just... dressed up like Evil Knievel. I can see it now. Should be dressed up like Evil Knievel for sure, but he could probably just back uh, pedal or just, you know, ride in on another venue, like just be a side act. The, the NHRA does it all the time. Like when they, they need like 20 minutes or whatever to set up for the next wave, like they have a thing where they have the local uh, California Highway Patrol go up against just some random dude that won a lotto ticket. To, to be on the track that day. And uh, yeah, that's the thing they do for 10 minutes. There's no trophy involved. It's just, uh, you know, just, just one more item on the itinerary. Make it a show, Robbie. Like, hit 150 miles per hour, then hit a ramp and see how many other golf carts you can jump over. So you're definitely going to play some like ACDC for him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, he's, and all the ladies with three teeth in their head are going to be all over him afterwards. There's a oh, lot of hi, the racetrack, bro. Don't, don't, don't make Got sure. any extra There's room in that there. golf cart for me? They might. He might. He might have a golf cart groupie. I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, he definitely has it. a golf cart groupie. And she's like wearing these like, what are they called? The, what are those shorts? The Dixie Dukes, whatever the fuck they're called. The Daisy Dukes. Daisy Dukes. It's hot and in South Carolina, so you're probably not wrong. And they're way too small for her. Like they maybe fit her when she was 21, but now, you know, she's on her third divorce. She's had seven kids with eight people. Wow. Jesus. <laughs> Look, I can still fit into my Daisy Dukes. <laughs> Two of those dudes were a gay couple that she was surrogating for because they were going to pay her 500 bucks. That's that's how that works. I spent that on scratch-offs. 
Wow. You're upsetting all of our listeners in the good state of South Carolina. No, right just just the the women who've had seven kids and only had three teeth. If you've got <laughs> if you've got a full mouth of teeth, then this isn't about you. Don't take offense. That's the beauty. When you can get when you get really specific in an insult, it's kind of like, well, if you get upset about this, you're just admitting that this is you. This is you. I don't think that's how that works, but okay. Yeah, it is. Anyway, I'm pretty sure no one in South Carolina listens to this. So that's great. If we get listens from North Carolina, wrong. I bet they're laughing their ass. Like, yes, yes, my preach about those South Carolina people. You're know, like this guy Cushes is making a lot of sense, dude. They're all in the Daisy Dukes, and they they're they're wearing the teeny tiny top, so there's nothing but under boob, Mike Fish. Like it's yeah, you, you you'd be Special. surprised. Like there's a lot of toothy girls at those shows. <laughs> Won't want me to use my gums on you there, Bobby? Mm-hmm. You would get addicted to that. <laughs> once my once I put the grandkitties away, I'm gonna rock your world. Wow. What a wonderful is... way to end the first half of all books. So there you go, Robbie. Good luck in your uh need for speed. Flip, dude. And Always wear a condom. Still to come. That's good advice. That's good advice. On this week's Waffle Box, we are talking 3,000 years of longing with Idris Elba as he plays a djinn. Not a genie, a djinn. They might sound the same, but they're not. Uh, If you don't know, djinns are way more... They're way more... uh, They're nicer. They give more than three wishes. Genies are... Cheap. Anyway, that's why I heard anyway. streets. Anyway, streets. Still good. Wrong. So we've got that to come. Obviously, we've got a middle show quiz and all that feel good segment and blah 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 blah. We'll be right back after this short break. So stick around. <laughs> Hey you! Yes you! Was you thinking of having that beer? But my friend, it's only 10am! Won't everyone judge you for drinking this early? Don't worry, we've got just the thing to help you. Your very own Waffle Box mug! And now, everyone will just think you're drinking coffee, so you can enjoy your morning beer judgment free. Go to wafflemerch.com to get yours today. Hey, welcome back to Wallbox. Still to come, I just help us new movie flick. We're talking about that middle of the show quiz coming up as it is the middle of the show quiz trapdoor and more. So yes, it is the middle of the show. It's that time for the middle of the show quiz. Middle of the show quiz. So this quiz this week, it's all about the movie 300 Years of Longing. So I hope you did your research on the movie and its stars. If you I first... got to see it three hours ago. That's, Ooh, that's all there I got. Go. So, so it's fresh. It's fresh. It's good. It's good. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you haven't listened to an episode of Waffle Box before, thanks for joining us. But it's the middle of the show, Chris. So what happens here? I ask Kush five questions. Obviously, his goal is to clean sweep it, but we'll accept best three out of five. Are you ready, Kush? I'm ready. I am ready. Tens music has started. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, if he gets the question right, he hears this. Which is his happy face. I like that. Hey, sound. If he gets it wrong, it makes him a sad face. Oh, I like that. All right. So, oh, question n- number one. Okay. Yeah, 3,000 right, right. Years of Longing, the movie, hmm. is based on what short story? Uh, it was literally 
a title card in the movie I just saw three hours ago, and I do not recall, but it wasn't 3,000 years of longing. It was, I mean, that's it was like a thousand. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm sorry. Oh, it was the gin in the nightingale's eye. Okay. Yeah. Oop, derp. Oops. That's wrong. Wrong. Um, I just Elba stars in this movie. Now sure. he made oh. his TV debut in the UK in the sitcom. 2.4 children. Oh, okay. Now, what high flying job did his character have in the episode? He's a flight attendant. He, well, he was a he was a parachute instructor, obviously. Oh, okay, obviously. I guess obviously, not. that TV show I've never seen. I've never heard of. I think it was in 1994, that episode came oh. out that he was in. Okay. I guess high-flying job's kind of a bad... It should have been high-falling, high I guess. That'd be the best uh, way to describe that. Um, it wasn't going to be he was the pilot. It was going to be... So he's, he's a wacky skydiver. Or again, he's... Look, look at this tough guy's doing a woman's job. <laughs> <laughs> 1994 there is that was a woman's job anyways so this next question you, you should easily get this because as we've already discovered on this week's episode you are a huge fan of the wire um <laughs> i just every elba, episode i just Twice. elba starred Back. as character stringer bell hmm. but what was stringer bell's real first name omar Oh. Ah! It was Russell, obviously. Oh, gee. See, that's why. That's what I get for watching the show backwards. Mm. All right, now I hope. Yeah, hopefully, you might get these two. These might be a little bit easier because um, Tilda Swinton is also in this mm -hmm. movie. Mm -hmm. So, what was the name of the angel that Tilda Swinton played in the movie Constantine? Oh, I want to say Gabriel, but that's probably wrong. It was Gabriel. Hey, hey. on the board. You're on the board. <laughs> yeah, I can do anything. <laughs> and Tilda Swinton obviously is now in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Which yes. movie? Did she make her MCU debut? I would have said Doctor Strange. And you would be correct. Oh. Well done. I, I win. Just, see, normally I, I play, because normally you do really well on this, so I get to do, you know, let's play the, the hey, he won. But you didn't, you lost. Oh. I won, and I haven't got any. Where pick up all this money then? Let's no, just screw around. Let's just do that over and over again. Oh no. Stop oh it. dear. Uh, well, that was fun. That was all. I was really. Uh, I, for some reason, I assumed you'd seen The Wire. That would be a really good question. Yeah. And then shit the bed still. Anyway, let's. let's... I'm a bad little boy. Let's, let's delete some things from existence now. Let's, let's exercise yeah. the demons uh, in this week's Trapdoor segment. Ah! Yes, Trapdoor segment. Uh, once again, just to give you a quick overview if this is the first time listening or watching what box. Uh, Welcome. This Welcome, welcome. Take a seat. Have a drink. Stay hydrated. Um, so what I do here is I give Kush several options, all connected in a category or whatever it might be. And then based on which one is the worst, we delete it from history by sending it down <laughs> the trap door. 
this week's theme, Kush, are things that stupid kids believe in. <laughs> so we have three this week. Stupid and... kids are Marvel fanboys. Oh! Oh! No, you didn't. So this week's choices are the Easter Bunny, the Easter Bunny, Santa Claus, Santa Claus, or the Tooth Fairy. Tooth Fairy. Now I Who have my worst? opinion on this, but one of those has got to go. Which yeah, one are you going to do? In? We... Show you working. I'm getting rid of the Easter Bunny. A lot of people are confused about, well, what does the Easter, what does a bunny have to do with the holiday of Easter? It, it's not, it's, it's, it's a seasonal thing. It's springtime, rabbits, blah, 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 blah. So it's, it's a bunny on Easter. It's an Easter bunny. Yeah. It's, it's not important, but it is the least important. Like Santa Claus at least brings you gifts and the tooth fairy is giving you money. Like, okay. Here, here, Tooth Fairy just came by. There we go. That, that's what the Tooth Fairy gave me for, for, for my back two molars. Uh, and uh, so we're getting rid of the Easter Bunny because, quite well, frankly, I don't like chocolate eggs and peeps are terrible. It, oh, I agree with that. But before I hit the <laughs> button and send the Easter Bunny to its death, mm -hmm. maybe my little argument here might be able to sway your mind and maybe you might change your opinion here. Because... Here's where I'm going at this, right? So the Easter Bunny, mm -hmm. he, you know, they, they come around with the basket, give you chocolate eggs and all that good stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Everyone loves some chocolate. Sure. The Tooth Fairy, sure, oh. creepily, she takes your old teeth, which is weird, but mm -hmm. she buys them for me. She leaves you some money behind. I can get on board with that. Santa Claus... You say he brings you gifts, mm -hmm. but does he? Does he? Yes. Yes. No. Your parents no. get you gifts. He just takes all the fucking credit. He's well, a piece of shit. My parents also give me gifts. Santa gives me gifts, and my parents also. So give what me you gifts. are you literally I don't know what saying? Kind of lifestyle you're living. When you woke up on Christmas Day, there was like presents under the tree marked from Santa. Yes. Really. And from mom and dad, yes. No, from mom. Wow, my parents weren't that. They didn't think of that. They just, I just for some reason I was like, Sorry? wait, why is this from mom and dad? But so Santa brought me this. So why the fuck is Santa Claus got the same you, handwriting man. as you, mom? I, I guess you weren't a good boy. Like your mom um, and dad still love you, but Santa didn't. So. Ah, oh, well, then I just... I was a good boy, and my mom likes me. Uh, Santa didn't bring me shit. Mm -hmm. <sighs> All right, you fine. Need to, you need to rethink your life. Bye-bye, Easter Bunny. Bye-bye, buddy. Although... although all right. <laughs> Maybe that was like a, their little thing. Maybe now the Easter Bunny... Or the I thought you were like gonna... saying it's some kind of pyramid scheme. I thought Maybe. That's where you were yeah. going with this. Yeah, and, so and the then, Easter Bunny... And then that money... Goes to Santa for milk no. and cookies. <laughs> I wasn't going that deep, but so the Easter Bunny gives you chocolate, which is obviously mm -hmm. bad for your teeth. So the eat, like, so he's they're just trying to the Easter Bunny is fucking up your teeth, and so the teeth pair is swinging in and buying. I reckon they're working yeah. together in some kind of weird Ponzi scheme. I thought that's where you were going with that. <laughs> like maybe, <laughs> like they give. I mean, I don't know how much a tooth is worth these days to the tooth fairy, but back in my day, it was like. 50p. 50p, wow. Nice. So I'm assuming now, now I'm thinking about it, is the tooth worth more than that in the, in the market, in the black market? Tooth fairies making profit on my teeth. And I only got a quarter for my teeth. So. What does that convert to, you reckon? Oh, that's probably about 20 pence. Yeah. But yeah, Perfect. my teeth were more about it. So there you go. Santa Claus bought you gifts, but on the, on the, you know, swings and roundabouts. I got more money for my teeth. So, you know, I guess we both had great childhoods. Okay. <laughs> Good for you. I'm glad you feel better now. <laughs> oh, that's settled. See you later, Easter Bunny. Dwayne Johnson never played you in a movie anyway. Who gives a shit? Hmm. All right, let's talk about more movies. Oh, yeah. Let's talk about Idris Elba playing a gin 
in this week's Kush's Movie Review. Bum, 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 bum. Kush's Movie Review. 3,000 Years of Longing. Kush Hayes, is this That's about, cool. is this like a the, the sequel to 40-Year-Old Virgin? <laughs> no, and this guy's really is, uh, been waiting for the right girl. Yeah. 3,000 Years of Longing. It is a George Miller-directed film uh, and uh, written, adapted as well. Um, the, if you wondering why you know that name he's the guy who's done all the mad max movies but he's also done both the babe movies you know pig in the city and i think the first one was just called babe it's an interesting uh, also mix. you know happy feet the, the thing about the tap dancing pig one just babe like, happy yeah, feet george mad Miller. max and now three thousand years of longing um I would say this is more in the style of like an old Terry Gilliam film, but you know, Monty Python and all that. Like, this is very indie riffic. It's uh, about Tilda Swinton. She is a neurologist, if I said that correctly. Basically, she studies stories and she tells stories and has this whole theory about, you know, information was always told through like bedtime stories. That's how we got our information. We made up myths and this and that and our gods. And now that everyone's a superhero, but now, now everyone's focused on science. But back in the day, we used to like, you know, when we talked about the myth of creation, you know, we didn't have science to rely on. So it's a whole, it's basically, it's a story of a very lonely woman. That is where I'm trying to go with that. <laughs> All right. She needs a hobby. She is, she, uh, well, she has a hobby, but she's obsessed with her work and she closes off all these doors and uh, while on a conference in Istanbul, she visits a little little market shop and uh, finds what turns out to be a bottle with a gin in it, as opposed to a genie. But unlike what Mike Fish said in the first half, this genie is only granting you three wishes. Oh, look at that I sour face. It. Look at that sour face. And he, he breaks down all the rules that you, you've you seen in Aladdin. You can't no, ask no wishing them more for wishes. more wishes. Yeah, can't can't make you fall in love. Can't. Uh, well, actually, he did, he can make people fall in love, but he can't bring back the dead. He can't make you immortal. You know, little, little things like that. So he breaks down all the rules. And until here's one of the like, rules. Nah, like, uh, like for my first wish, I want you to introduce me to another gin. Um, he could probably make that happen. Mm, loophole, love a loophole. Mm -hmm. yeah that's not brought up i mean that definitely doesn't cover that's definitely not under can't wish for more wishes is it oh but if you did summon another genie or a gen we're just gonna keep calling them genie folks like you'll have to forgive me mike fish but anyways um she discovers she has a gin and it is idris elba and uh she throws him off at first because normally everyone wants to wish for something immediately, you know, like, what are you truly long longing? What do you really want in this? What do you need, Mike Fish? It is someone's going to give it to you. And she's like, no. Nah. And he's like, what do you mean, no? He's like, I don't want anything. He's like, what? <laughs> like, what like, you you got to want something. Like, go, come on, come on. I, I need you. I need one, two, three. I need you to do this. Like, I'm trying to get free here. And he's like, nah, I don't want anything. And... Eventually, they just start talking, and he starts breaking down his life. And this is a kind of an anthology film. Like, there's there's three or four separate stories going on with this, not including Idris Elba and Tilda Swinton's scenes. Um, it's story's kind of dry. Not gonna lie, it's an hour and forty plus minutes. It's not very long, but it it feels longer than it was. Uh, however, this was it's the most beautiful movie that currently exists. I, I don't think there will be another one. George Miller really knows how to how to bring something visual to the screen. Um, I already think the category for best production design and best costumes is now locked. Nothing is going to match or exceed this. Like I'm telling you right now, I've called it. Those two best production design, best costume. 3,000 Years of Longing is going to win those two awards. I know they're not the biggest awards, yeah, best. but there isn't not another movie this year that looks like this. So 
I'm still giving it four stars. I think you should see this on the big screen. It's very indie, and it did not do well this weekend, so it's going to be gone sooner than later. Oh. Maybe that should be one of the wishes. I wish you would all see 3,000 Years of Longing. There, now, there's a romance in it, too, so take the wife, take oh, the girlfriend, she doesn't take fall the girlfriend's in love wife. With the gin, does she? Mm, uh, yeah, fuck it. Sure. Yeah, she does. <laughs> Ugh. So, oh, um, is, this, is this like an Aladdin thing? Is the final wish to make him a real boy? No. Okay. Um, it, it, again, it's just very dry. It's... um. It's very English, Mike. I think you you might actually get a little more out of this than I did. Like it's it's the the dialogue is very fast, despite the fact that like sometimes they're speaking Greek, sometimes they're speaking Arabic, sometimes they're speaking other languages. They're sub the best times I could understand the movie is when there were subtitles, and there are thankfully a lot of subtitles. But um, yeah, it's um story wise is only okay. Visually, best looking movie out right now. Not a better looking film. In the theaters currently. Well, there you go. It's four out of five from Crochet. See it while you can because mm-hmm. it might not be there for long. No, it won't be there for long. I promise you that. <laughs> Does I just Elba have like a weird ponytail like Will Smith? No. In Aladdin. No ponytail, but he's got uh got ribbed ears. Not not necessarily like a clang on, like you'd have to see him. And then um, he's got a little weird red patch in his in his beard, and then he's got like fish scales on his legs. It's uh, yeah, yes. he's got an interesting look. And then it's he's supposed to be like nine feet tall, and I don't know how tall Tilda Swinton is in real life. Like let's she's just say she's five five. Like they do a lot of interesting five eight. Let's say she's six foot. They do a lot of interesting Some force perspective. Or you know, like he's still towering over him. I'm sorry. For some reason, I feel like she's a very tall woman. I don't know why. She probably is. Most actresses are. Um, yeah, let's say she's a full six feet. Um, again, they do a lot of forced perspective where they still make him. There's times where there's reverse projection where she's literally just talking to a green screen and he's just superimposed, and, and that 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 doesn't look too good. The CGI in this does not look really good, but um, everything else, it's a beautiful looking film. Honestly, I was glad I saw it in the theater. Didn't really enjoy the story though. Mm. You're really selling, you know, the whole go out and spend your money. I'm just keeping it real. I'm telling you, you, if you're gonna, if you need to see a movie in the theater that looks great, see this over anything the MCU is offering. Honestly, there's a lot of very cool visuals in this. There you go. Four out of five. Wonderful stuff. Mm-hmm. What um. What are the good folks of the Soup Squad got to look forward to? Uh, is anything on the docket for next week's movie review? Um, you have I just Elba's no. movies you want to talk about? Great question. Jeez. Uh, I would not be surprised if, if we do three for three. That would be amazing. That would be a hat trick. The Idris Elba hat trick. But probably not. Uh, I'll let you know. I'll let you know. Maybe, maybe we talk about Sylvester Stallone's new Amazon Prime movie, um, Samaritan. Oh, that maybe we don't. Maybe we don't. I'm sure there's something coming out in the theater. We'll figure it out. Maybe we'll just talk about the wire after you watch it this week. Probably not watching the wire, but cool. Never mind. Anyway, that's uh, before we wrap up the show. With this fire. week's <laughs> with this week's feel good segment of the week. Obviously, just get the plugs in. Um, if you want to become an official member of the Super Squad and support the show, we appreciate you. Go to wafflemerch.com, buy some swag, or go to extrawaffle.com where you can get some bonus content from yours truly and Cochet's. So we talk about all sorts of different little things on the Extra Waffle. Uh, you can become a member from as little as one dollar a deal. Also, make sure you do follow us on all the social medias. Go to enjoywafflebox.com to find all the links. If you are watching us, you can also listen to us on your favorite podcast platform. And if you are listening to us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and all that good stuff, and you want to see our beautiful faces, especially now I'm looking very snazzy in these glasses, uh, you can check us out on our YouTube channel, enjoywafflebox.com, for all of those links. 
But it's now time to wrap this week's show with some feel good stuff and with this week's feel good story of the week. It's the coolest fucking story I've ever heard in my entire life. That's insane. It, can I hear it again? Ah, this week's feel good story comes to us from the UK, the United States kingdom of these states as they like to call it mm. i don't think they do that. um this story features one of the nicest men in hollywood mr keanu reeves so oh. this guy keanu reeves he's just hanging about having a quote-unquote couple of whiskeys um mm. in one of the local town pubs and he bumps into a young gentleman and they get to chatting away. And he says, oh, yeah, it's just having a couple of drinks just to calm the nerves. Today's my wedding day. It'd be awesome if you could swing by. And sure as shit, at the wedding reception, in walks Keanu Reeves. Makes the rounds, hangs out, has a couple more whiskeys, apparently, and just takes photos with <laughs> one just hanging out. It's not like an epic Probably. story, but... I just love those kind of little stories where, you know what, fuck it, I'll go to your wedding. Why not? Yeah, fuck it. I'll go to your open bar. I'll have a, yeah. I'll have a plate of some filet well, no, and fish. That's, that's, I don't know. I mean, I haven't been to a wedding in England for several years now since I moved to, to America, but it's, open bar at weddings are a very rare thing in the UK. Mm-hmm. You'd always be spending fucking shitloads of money in that place. Um, but later, the story adds, the Matrix actor walked into the Fox and Hounds, which every it's like the fox and hound and the white horse every single town has the same name pubs it's hilarious are they all related or is no that it's just, just a huge coincidence it's a generic name it's just a so generic just, name weird yeah i think it's just pull out two random animals and that's that's, that's how you name your pub i think just like random oh, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's the bear and pig yep that'll do mm-hmm. I don't know what it is. Um, we, we we have a pig and whistle out here. Fun. Any relation? Does, is it like the old story goes back, dates back 200 years when the pig would announce his entrance to the farm with a toot of his whistle? Is that a real story? I don't know. I'm just trying to, oh. trying to create some whimsical <laughs> stories. Like why the pup is called that. That would have been amazing. Um, no, it's it's definitely based on the the whole motif is this is an English pub house. Oh. We we have all the so English literally they're just two food. random words slapping together. Stick and in the mm-hmm. middle, charging San Francisco prices. Just very expensive. I don't know how much pub food costs out in the UK, but very expensive in San Francisco. So what's the, what could be the worst pub name? Like something like the Skunk and Mosquito. <laughs> two of the worst things ever toe jam and earls which was a video game but still but still toe jam and earls something that sounds more of like a not a pub but kind of like a a, a lounge bar where annoying okay. people go to mm. anyway Keanu Reeves went into the fox and hounds uh, after the wedding and happily mingled with customers and posed for photos the bar's owner, Danny Ricks, was shocked when the film star entered and sat down at a table. It's not every what? day you get a Hollywood star walk into your pub. It made everyone's evening. Well, there you go. Keanu Reeves, man of the people. And he still looks exactly the same as he did 20 years ago. He's starting to show his age now, which is still like, I think he still looks younger than I do. But uh, yeah, he, he's... He's starting to show his age. Now. It's the long hair. So it's time when you get when you if you've got a good hairline and you have long hair, mm. it does make you younger. I'm I'm sure of it. Yeah, that makes so much sense. Actually, now that you say that, that makes so much sense. Like um, where's... off topic, I know it's a Welsh team that have you been watching. Welcome to Wrexham. I I watched the first two episodes. Yeah, I've only seen the first two. It's thoroughly enjoyable. Okay. Oh well, you said as if you disagree. No. Oh, I've, but I've only got two episodes, and that's that's the extent of my that and Ted Lasso. 
is the extent oh, of stop my comparing. football knowledge. Uh, you're not the only. You're not the first person to do that. The I'm not only comparing thing... anything. I'm just saying. No, but no, 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 it's my accumulated knowledge. But so many people have made the Ted Lasso connection. So it's got, it, there is zero connection with it. It's just yeah, oh, it stars the American in football. That's it. I'm just, I, but and that's the only football I know is what I'm saying. But there's um, there's a guy who <laughs> I can't remember his name. Some American guy who recently purchased um Chelsea Football Club, a Premier League team. Okay. And all the headlines were saying things. Oh, this guy's channeling his inner Ted Lasso. Ted Lasso wasn't the owner of the club. He was just a manager. Yeah. Like, it's, just because he's American Look, doesn't dude, mean it's Ted if Lasso. I didn't see Ted La- if I didn't see Ted Lasso, I wouldn't have brought it up. It's the only experience I have with European football. <laughs> That's all I'm trying to say. That's all I'm trying to say. I don't know. Any- I don't. <sighs> I'm sure there's a movie out there like Major League and like Necessary <laughs> Roughness. Where it's just like, hey, look look at these renegade football players. They're going to show one to the Premier League. Like, yeah, it's an exhibition match, mate. Get your kit ready. We're going to go. And, like, eventually, like, everybody just, like, the first play, this happens in all the moves, it's just, like, everybody just drop kicks the better team. And they get, like, just red cards just start getting thrown up in the air. But 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 then they, they, they come back and they, they win the game by, like, one. Or maybe even they tie because... You know, your football rules are a lot different. And that's the story of Christmas. I don't know anything about football. <laughs> they should call it football, not soccer. Not that there's anything wrong against calling it soccer, but we're all, I'm we're trying all to respect love. your culture by not calling it soccer. Otherwise, I just call it soccer. Beautiful. <sighs> anyway. We started off talking about fighting in a comment. Now, look, now we're fighting. We need. To, we need. To... Are we fighting? I don't, know. I don't think we're fighting. Um, let's plug some fighting. stuff. Let's plug some stuff in the next oh, seven okay. days. In the first seven days of September, do you remember the merry and September? Uh, what what are the fine folks got to look forward to coming from the Bosnet family in the next seven days? Uh, guys, I wish I could tell you that you are li- currently listening to the newest Sweet Science Cinema episode, but unfortunately, that's going to be put on hiatus until further notice. Um, I'm just, yeah, I'm just that busy right now. It's unfortunate. So we can't can't figure out a proper date for the next one. Otherwise, we will update you when we do another Sweet Science Cinema. I still want to do it. I'm just uh, having a hard time getting ready with it. Um there should be another microdose out this week, but again, I'm not busy. We might just miss a week of microdose as well. Um, I'm going on the road as this, oh, as we're talking, I'll be driving a truck to LA. So maybe I will just do a, a mini microdose on the solo. But yeah, you just, all know, I feel like those aren't good the, episodes. Stick the recording on and you can re- just talk while you're driving. Yeah, totally could do that. Uh, we'll, we'll see. TBD. TBD, but definitely no sweet science cinema until uh, on the foreseeable future, unfortunately. So, but you can always check out everything plus kick ass movie podcast, plus Kush and Kai, plus just movie reviews from a year and a half ago now. Everything is there at the Bosnet.family. Check it out. Mm-hmm. Um, but until next week, I'll be back on September the something. That'll be next Wednesday. Oh, it's always the end of sep- so September. It's going to be Halloween soon. It's going to be Christmas. It's going to be New Year. And then we're going to be like, oh, my God, where did that year go? And we're going to be oh, freezing like our that. balls off. Oh, right. I fucking hate winter. <laughs> but until... What's worse? What's New one? Jersey winter or London winter? Oh, New Jersey winter. By far. Okay. By far. Like worst case, you're gonna get like maybe like forty degrees and a bit of miserable rain. Mm-hmm. Whereas here, you can be like two foot of snow and two degrees. Jesus, yeah, it's not fun. Yeah, that sounds awful. Yeah, did you see, ever so. see the picture? I don't. Maybe if I try to find out, maybe I throw it on the waffle box. Uh, Twitter, but last last winter I was at when I was out shoveling the old snow. Mm-hmm. I came in and literally my beard was full of oh, ice. I remember that. Yeah. yeah, I remember that. 
Scars well, that again. I mean, it's also your beard was wet. You. Well, I'm sure it's condensation. Why was your beard wet? Sure, sure. I don't know. I'm just. This is I'm not so quite sure. Sure. It, it sounds like you're accusing me of something, but I don't know quite what. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, what a great Ken content there. Dubious. 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 All right. Yes. So check that out. Go to enjoywalkbox.com for all the links and bosnet.family for all the back catalog for microdoses, sweet science, simar, and all that good stuff. You're going to you're gonna throw up there, Kush? No, I'm just oh. trying not to interrupt you. Oh, <laughs> I was worried there for a second. I was like, oh my God, is he going to throw up live on Waffle Box? No. I would have clipped that. Anyway, till next week, folks. Thanks for joining us. Take care of each other. And each other. That's all, folks.